Hello and welcome to the Embedded Online Conference. I'm Jacob Beningo, and in this micro talk, we're going to be talking about why function pointers are awesome. Now, you might have heard otherwise. You might have actually heard that function pointers are evil. And part of the reason why we often have this rumor is can be kind of traced back to Misra C 1998, the rule number 104. Now, this interesting rule states that non constant pointers to functions shall not be used. And what has happened from this is that people have said, oh, function pointers are evil. We shouldn't be using these. And if you look a little bit closer at the actual rule, you know, it does say, yes, there is a danger with pointers calculated at runtime that can uh, cause an error with the pointer um, and have it point to basically an arbitrary location. So the concern is that, hey, if we have this pointer at runtime, this thing can get corrupted. It could point to who knows what in memory, and then we could end up with unexpected operations of our embedded systems. Now, because of this, people have said, nope, never use function pointers. Again, they're evil. But if you look a little bit closer at this rule, you'll actually find that it says non-constant pointers to functions shall not be used. Now, it actually turns out that later versions of Mr. C actually rescinded this rule 104. Um, but I still find a lot of people get confused and, you know, in my courses or when I'm consulting with people, they'll say, oh, you can't use function pointers. Um, that's not allowed. And of course it is allowed. And it actually turns out that if we get rid of this whole idea of not using function pointers, you'll find out that function pointers actually have a lot of really cool, awesome use cases. So let's take a look at a couple of these use cases. First of all, function pointers can be used for callback functions. Now a callback function, um, it basically allows you to assign a different function that will be called based on what the application needs to do. Now the safe way to do this, of course, is to statically or at compile time, decide what function you're going to use. Now you could also do it dynamically during runtime. And that's kind of what this example um, shows just because it's very easy to show people, um, you know, how a callback would actually work. We basically have an application section here, a layer here. We have a driver layer or the kernel here. This is probably pre-compiled. We can't change how, what its behavior is. We probably want our interrupt service routines or our signal handlers to change behaviors from one application to the next, or uh, you know, especially if we're reusing our code across multiple product lines, or might have different types of functions or filters that we want to use in different circumstances. Uh, in those types of cases, in a dynamic version, you might have the main function actually register a function pointer with uh, the lower level kernel that then knows, hey, when the signal when the signal handler or interrupt service routine runs, I can. I have the pointer back to the application code and I can run application code from the lower level code without having to make a whole bunch of changes. Now, again, the recommendation here to do it safely would be to statically allocate this. And if you want to learn a little bit more about this type of use case, uh, you can actually visit my blog here at the very bottom. We just don't have the time in a micro talk to discuss all the details and how we actually set those types of things up. Now, the second use case for function pointers is for command processing. When I first started writing embedded software, when I was a you know undergrad or grad student, um, one of the things actually I started well before that, but um, one of the things that I used to do was I would use these gigantic switch case statements. And I was working on flight software one time, and we literally create we had we had a, over a, over hundred commands, probably close to two hundred commands that we had to process on this flight computer, and we used a switch statement to do that. So we had like 200 cases and we had this horrible piece of code that we were trying to maintain. It was probably somewhere along the lines of 10 to 20,000 lines of code, um, all in this one switch case statement, Ho a horrible thing. Um, but at some point I discovered that, hey, you know what? It's a far better way to actually use function pointers. Uh, we could actually, based on the command that comes in, allocate or direct or map um, a particular function to a function pointer and invoke a function to handle all the code that was needed. All those unwieldy switch case statements completely went away. Now, what ends up happening is that instead of all these switch case statements, you end up with some a nice little table array that looks like this. Now, what ends up happening here is that we have basically a typed up enumeration that's nice and human readable um, that then is associated that goes in the structure. We create a, a list, basically an array of that structure, and then the first row or first column in the table here is actually just a nice readable um, enumerated type for us. The second one, the second entry in this uh, in this structure actually turns out to be, um, and the second column uh, as well, is actually a list of all the function pointers that we want associated with the command on the left here. So what ends up happening is I can build out a very nice list of uh, commands and the pointers that are going to be uh, mapped to them. 
And then when I reference this, this array here, I can dereference or access one of the elements of the array, and I can access the actual uh, function pointer here and dereference it and run whatever the command wanted. So it makes the code a lot cleaner, reusable, very scalable, it makes it very ad easy to add new commands or remove other commands without having to go through a lot of code. Now, you might be wondering here, you know, is this really safe for use with embedded systems? Now, the key here thing here to look at is that I've declared this array that I'm using, the structured array of function pointers, to be static so that I limit the scope so that I can't link, you know, I can't allow people elsewhere in the code to link to this and try to modify my table. And then secondly, I declare it as const. Now, making this a constant array um, of structures, essentially, what I'm doing is, is I'm tr hopefully when I compile this, the const is telling the compiler to store this in Flash rather than in RAM. And what will happen is that these will be constant function pointers stored in Flash. And what will happen is because they're not in RAM, even if I got bit flips or, or crazy things happening in RAM um, memory corruption, these function pointers would be constant. They shouldn't change. So um, in most embedded compilers, by default, anything that's constant will be stored in Flash and access from Flash unless you go and change any of your compiler settings. So if you're using function pointers, make sure that they are stored in a location where they really can't be changed. You don't want these in, in, in Flash. Otherwise, you really are starting to disobey some of the misery rules, and you're opening yourself up to allowing a function pointer, which could be called, to become corrupted if that memory location gets corrupted by something else in the system. Now, another really cool use case is for schedulers. You really can't create uh, a time-based scheduler or a real-time operating system without using function pointers. They can be extremely useful. They're a great tool, um, especially if they're used properly. Now, what ends up happening here is you can end up again with a nice, uh, a nice little uh, table array, essentially, of function pointers associated with um, the things necessary to actually run a task. Now, again, if you're using a real-time operating system, you'll normally want to do this statically, um, although there are usually options to do this dynamically um, as well when you create tasks and things like that. Um, so if you are interested in learning a little bit more about how you can use function pointers with schedulers, uh, a while back, I think probably almost almost a decade, not quite seven or eight years ago, I wrote a little blog about how you actually go about doing this. So you can dive into those details a little bit more um, if you're interested. Now, another cool use case, another thing that makes function pointers awesome is that we can use them for state machines. Again, you can create a table-like structure to be able to create functions that point to the different states that will be executed. And then when you actually run your code, you can use a simple function like this, a, a, a function that returns nothing, uh, just as the example, it's a state machine, it's a run function for the state machine. And what I do here, you can see here, because we have we, we would have our states in some type of array of function pointers again, or a structure of, um, you know, that includes an enumerated type and a, a function pointer. What ends up happening here is if you were to dereference that array outside the bounds of what was defined for the function pointers, you could be calling either something outside of the memory bounds, or you could be calling something that does exist in memory, um, but wasn't designed to be called, and then you can just kind of, your system can go off into the weeds, essentially. So one of the, one key thing to do there is that if you do use arrays of function pointers, when you dereference them, you want to make sure you have some code that says, hey, I'm about to dereference this thing. Does it make sense? Is it within the bounds that I designed for this function pointer table? Um, and that's all I'm doing here. There might be some variable called state machine state. Um, it, you know, when we run here, it's being manipulated to decide what state the system is in. And then I'm, I just want to make sure that it's within the allocated state. So num states, may, for example, might be five. Um, and as long as uh, state machine um, state is less than five, then we'll, we will go through, we'll dereference the table that we create for our states. And then we just dereference the, the function pointer right there. So again, pretty simple and straightforward. Um, again, in our micro talk, don't have time to go over every single detail, but uh, some of my older blogs talk about this as well that you can um, follow up with a little bit later as well. Now, this is just a couple of the use cases. There's so many more things. We can use function pointers for interrupt vector tables. We can use them in uh, communication interfaces. We can use them to simplify our switch statements, which I kind of already mentioned. Uh, we can use it to emulate some type of polymorphism as well within our C code, um, which is pretty cool. Uh, we can do compile time selection of functions during implementation. Uh, we can also do it during runtime, although again, that starts to get kind of dangerous in case you have bit flips or memory corruption. It can affect the way that the, your function, it can affect if you dereference a function pointer, what code will actually get executed. Uh, but there's so much more that can be done here. It's uh, really quite cool. Now again, because function pointers are awesome, and I'm hoping that you will investigate how to safely use them, I do want to warn you at the end here too, be careful. 
they can be dangerous. It's why there are miserable rules that specify how you should properly use function pointers. Um, you know, limit the scope for tables. If you create tables of function pointers, limit their scope so other code modules can't accidentally link to them and modify them in any way. Uh, make sure that those function pointers are not stored in RAM. Make sure that you perform runtime checks to make sure that they're not null, that they're pointing to realistic locations, and that they you know haven't been modified in some way that the address actually makes sense. Uh, you can even use comp the, your uh, preprocessor directives or even use the memory protection unit to ensure that any region that has a function pointer that's being dereferenced, that it's limited to that specific range and you can easily check and make sure that that's not gonna get corrupted. So, and of course, don't try to do anything that's weird uh, per se or clever because what will happen is, is some bug will you know, bite you and uh, your system will end up with some strange behavior that takes way too long um, to debug. So if you do want to learn a little bit more or learn about more about what I do in the embedded systems industry, feel free to hop over to Beningo.com. You'll be able to find all kinds of additional articles and information uh, and a little bit about myself as well. Thank you very much for attending this micro talk. I hope that you found it useful and that you will also enjoy the embedded online conference. We got a lot of great talks lined up and I look forward to answering any of your questions. Thank you.